Hello everyone, on to a Aussie here. Um, I went into town today and did a bit of shopping. So uh, I had the uh, fortune to find these things. They're normally $5 a kilo. Um, they're going out for a dollar a kilo today, organic uh, Dutch cream potatoes. Would I normally buy them? Oh, that depends. But because I've got a canner, I thought, well, here's an opportunity. I'll grab them and put them, take them home and uh, do a quick video to show you guys how to do it. Um, it's just another thing to show you about how you can actually save money. So $25 for five bucks, you're not going to pass it up, especially if you have one of these. Anyway, I'll get them all ready um, and get them in the jars and I'll bring you back and do a really super quick session so you can see how it's done. Cheers. Welcome back. Um, got all the potatoes done, so we're ready to start cleaning up. I'll turn the camera so that you can actually see what I'm doing instead of looking at my ugly dial. Okay, there you go. Uh, and it is still pretty cramped. There's not much I can do about it. I don't have a lot of room in this house. But anyway, we'll get it happening and you can see what's going on. Now doing a hot pack, which is what I would normally do with these kind of things. The hot jars, hot water, hot canner, but just a cold product. So, and what I do to try and help with uh, the air bubbles is just pour a little bit of water in at the start, just to make it a little bit easier. Now, hopefully you can see all of that. I can't get it much better than that, sorry. That's the best I can do with what we've got. And as I said, I'm only trying to help you all learn how to do this process because I think people need to start learning. Um, and there's just nothing much available so that's why I'm doing it and try and get it all out obviously I know they're not you know super great quality videos can't help that but it is what it is anyway you get your potatoes which are raw totally raw they've just been sitting in uh, water so get it to about fill it up you don't need to have it like absolutely tightly packed you are probably better not to then you pour your boiling water in, up to your one inch headline again. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. You get your stick and give it a really, really good poke because any air bubbles that are in between those potatoes are going to blow your lid out and you'll lose your seal if you don't make sure you've got them all out. I think they're all gone. And then just top your jar up, have a really good look at it, and try and get it up just above the first rim. Now it's not necessary to like use vinegar like I do, but that's just a habit. So I get a piece of paper towel. And just go around the top you can use water you can use a cloth i'm just using paper towel because it's what i've got here just wipe that rim so there's nothing on there no little tiny piece of potato or anything like that that's going to stop it from sealing grab your lid and yeah where's my ocd thing where is it there it is the ball label to the front of the jar the label on the thing is at the top Straight to the front, I can't help it, sorry. Put your lid on, tighten your ring up, and into the canner it goes. Just finger tight, don't reef it down because if there is anything in there, you want that to be able to come out. Now, hot pack is hot water in the canner, hot everything, as I've said before. I'll just do another one. Don't need to see that many. Just empty it all out. Funnel in and away we go again. Now you can use stock, you can use bouillon, you can put spices, onion, salt, garlic, salt, you know, a bit of fresh herbs, mixed herbs, whatever you want to put in with it, you can. I choose not to, purely just so that I've got more options for when I actually want to use it. 
because who wants their potatoes that would take them like taste them like uh, chicken bouillon, you know, or mashed potato tasting like chicken. No thanks. But um, if you want to use it just specifically for a certain purpose, you know, by all means, go ahead, do what you want to do, that sort of thing with it. Um, it's not going to hurt it. It's not going to cause an issue. So, yeah, just if that's what you like, go ahead. But I choose not to. Now, that little guy is going to have to come out because he's not going to go down no matter what. Try and get a smaller one in there. This is the trouble with them, which is a bit of a pain in the butt sometimes. There you go. Just fill your jar up. Same thing again. Just get your little stick. Give it a bit of a poke. Get all the air out. And believe me, you really want to make sure you get that out because I've had one that I didn't and it ended up, it blew the lid. It's still sealed, but it blew the lid and put a little dent in the lid. So, yeah, we ended up, that one couldn't go on the shelf. It had to be used up straight away because you can't guarantee that something hasn't gone into it. So, just be aware that that's something that you've got to be a bit careful of. Get your little lid. There we go. Bring on. Put it down. Just to there. And that's another one in the canner. But yeah, I think that's enough. Um, I'll bring you back when that's all done and just quickly run you through the process again. Okay, right. We've got two jars left to go. Just to show you again the process. Just make sure that you debubble it. I'll just move that so you can see it. Just put your stick in and make sure you've got all the bubbles out. Same in that jar. Make sure your product is below the waterline if you can. Just wipe the top with a damp cloth with vinegar. Get your lid. Rings on. Just finger tight again into the canner. Same again. Just wipe it with the vinegar. Don't have to use vinegar, you can use water, doesn't really matter. But when you're doing fatty meats and things, vinegar is the best. Lid on it and into the canner if you can get the lid on. Sometimes they are a pain in the butt. Just so there, don't crank it all the way down into the canner. Now, one thing I didn't tell you is last time if you're on tank water or you're running on boil water or you've got hard water, um, you might find you get white stuff all over your jars. It's just calcium buildup. Take the vinegar that you had and pour it into the canner and that'll stop all of that as well. So again, just uh, grease up all the lid, which I've already done. But um, I'll redo it and just show you anyway. For the ones who haven't seen it done before or just new on the channel, take the Vaseline. You can use olive oil if you want, but it leaves a really bad residue. And it's very difficult to get out of the canner. Um, so Vaseline is what all the Americans recommend and it does really work. It comes off as soon as you um, wash the canner, whereas the olive oil tends to uh, run down into the rings and it's very difficult to get out. So you just grease up the inside so that it doesn't stick because there is no gasket. Um, it is an all American. Now again, 
take your lead. Always check that your vent pipe is open and not clogged up. Everything's all there. Your overpressure plug's still in. That's your vent pipe. There's your gauge. Use your arrow on your arrow. Put the lid on and lock it down. It's getting too hot to touch now. That's it. Now you just have a look around, make sure that your gap around here is all level. If it is, lift your toggles up and tighten them until you can just feel a bit of resistance and then go to the next ones. Sorry, too close to the wall. Just check your, your gap again. Let's go all the way around. Make sure it's all pretty level. That's where things will go wrong if it's not. Oh, it looks to be pretty good. I might tighten that a little bit further first because that'll bring it down and level it all up. Then you just tighten it up all the way around a little bit by a little bit. And we're done. Right, now you just crank her up and you wait until you get like a steady stream of steam coming out of here and it needs to really be gushing out. Then you set your timer for 10 minutes. Once that timer has gone, um, you can then put your weight on and then you wait till you get your first jiggle from your weight um, and your pressure gauge is up to around 10 pounds of pressure. And then you start your process time, which is 40 minutes because we're using quartz and we're doing hot pack. Anyway, I'll wait till all of that's happening and then I'll bring you back again.